What is going on, everyone? This is the Stanford Podcast. We are back for another episode. Appreciate you all tuning in today. And I have a very special guest, as usual. We have Don of Not Notary Nation in the building. How are you doing today, Don? I am doing amazing. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. I can't complain at all. Uh, it's been a, a hectic morning, hectic morning to say the least. But hey, what what's what's the day without some challenges, right? <laughs> yes, always, always. Excellent. So just starting out, just uh, how we like to start off the show is, you know, when I introduce our guests, just tell the people a little bit about yourself and who you are and what do you do. Okay, so my name is Don Velez. I am from Ohio, from Dayton, Ohio. I am currently living in Florida, uh, right by Disney. Um, I am a wife of 27 years. We just celebrated last month. And I am a mother of four, two boys and two girls. I am also an entrepreneur. Um, I help my husband with his business and I have my notary business that is my primary focus right now. They say you're a mother of four. Yeah. You don't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like it at all. I appreciate that. A lot of people, you know, tell me they're surprised at how old I am and things like that. But I mean, I don't know. I guess I don't really, I appreciate it because I know how I feel in my body, <laughs> yeah. but I appreciate, um, you know, having a, a younger look because I don't want to look old. Who wants to look old? <laughs> so, <Right>. you know, <laughs> um, but my daughters are 30 and 22 and my sons are 19 and 13. What? <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm I'm shocked. I, I I man, I would I wouldn't even have believed it. Wow, that's that's okay. cool. No, I'll be 53, so it is what it is. Uh yeah, obviously black doesn't crack. As yeah, always. yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't. <laughs> uh, what 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 else can you explain for having such great genes? Because you look really. I mean, you look great. You look awesome. What's that? I, I, it, I mean, just I wouldn't even even guess that you have uh, four kids and you don't look like it. So, <laughs> what what is it that you doing? Because uh, you doing something right? Is it uh, was it drinking water every day? Diet? What is it? Like, definitely, <laughs> definitely drinking water every day. That's a must. But um, every day, all day. But um, honestly, I think that because I kind of started early with like my partying. Um, I probably started a little too early because uh, I moved out when I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. So, you know, back then, you know, it was 1985. I was making a thousand dollars a week. So, you know, in my mind, I was rich. Yeah. In my friends' minds, I was rich, yeah. you know, and um, I did like a lot of shit. I did so much. You don't even it's embarrassing. OK, <laughs> um, but as a result of that, I kind of halted early 20s. I was done, Yeah, you know, and so from there on, I just I don't know. I just had a, a vision on how I wanted to see my life and the path I was on was not going to get me there. Yeah. <laughs> so I left, you know, I moved out of my town. I moved to Atlanta and I lived in Atlanta for 13 years and then I moved to Florida. Now you so say you have choices. So you say you are from you from Ohio, right? Yeah, from Dayton. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. I mean, talk about that 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 because uh, I'm pretty sure it's a huge cultural shift to go from Ohio and then go to Atlanta and then in Florida. Like, talk about what was that transition like? Um, you know, okay. So at the time when I did it, oh, this is funny. So when I was young, you know, I was just fearless. Yeah. I was like a Tasmanian, like a tornado. I just I had no fear, no yeah. type of apprehension whatsoever. So I moved to Atlanta. I had a hundred dollars in my pocket. <laughs> I literally had a hundred dollars. I didn't really have a place to stay, but I stayed at a friend. So she went to stay with her boyfriend. Yeah. Um, and during the time when I was staying at her place, kind of waiting, cause you know, I transfer with the job that I had been with. I stayed with that company forever, but um, so I had income and everything, but I kind of took my time trying to figure out how where I wanted to be and et cetera. I was used to Atlanta because I used to go down to frequent. 
<laughs> so I was used to being in, you know, the 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 overall culture, um, which, you know, Atlanta has totally changed now. But back then it was still kind of um, the place to be. So I just kind of made some decisions. And to be honest with you, for me, with my story, it's nothing but the ancestors and God that kept me because I did some things that were so reckless that it's just unbelievable. Like if my daughters even thought of doing the things <laughs> that, you know, moving and all the stuff that I did, yeah, I don't man. know, I would probably just collapse. But it's, um, it was easy, but it was, it was a little difficult because um, I, <laughs> the first day that I moved to Atlanta, I met my husband. I didn't know, of course, at the time that was who I was going to marry. But the day I got there, I met him and um, pretty much he has not let me go since because that that day that we met, um, it turns out we worked in the same department and all this other stuff. So he just started like, you know, doing stuff for me. And I'm from a home, a small town. So in my town, you know, um, men were just not like that. And plus I was still young too. So none of us were actually women and men, you know, but it just wasn't something I was used to in terms of how he treated me and things like that. So as a result, um, I fell in love and, you know, the story continues. But um, coming to Florida, I don't like it here. If Florida is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Like every place is like a postcard, wherever you look. Yeah. Um, but because I am very much um, Midwest, you know, I'm just not Southern like at all. Like I don't. I can't put my head down when I speak to you. I can't, um, certain things that I see, uh, especially our people doing, you know, to, just to navigate because they're, you know, they're just used to it. Yeah. I just can't and I won't uh, conform to that type of behavior. So my goal really is to get out of here. I don't like it here. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very strange. This place is very, very different. Um, but I mean, I live in a beautiful condo. I mean, you know, it, the the aesthetic and and certain places here, it's absolutely nice and amazing. But overall, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't recommend that anyone move here. Yeah, you always hear always hear like uh, Florida is like like I said the aesthetic of it looks great. But every time you look in the news, <laughs> it's a Florida man does something, Florida woman does something. It's just something about it's something in the water out that way. So it's like man. Uh, Florida folks are a little different than everyone else. There's always something going on out there. You just hear this strange headline about them doing something. So, yeah, I feel you. I feel you on that one. It's embarrassing. <laughs> I see Florida man. Florida man is crazy, and so is Florida woman, and yeah. it's no thank you. Yeah, yeah, they different out that way. Uh, just to backtrack a bit, now you say you are from Ohio. Like, as far as like family goes, did you have anyone in your family? Did they have any? Uh, entrepreneurial experience and anyone own any businesses or you are or you pretty much the the trailblazer in the family so you know that's funny um that you should ask me that no one's ever asked me that question and i actually appreciate that question um so my grandmother had like 12 brothers and sisters and a couple of her brothers owned like garage shops where you know they was fixing on cars and and things like that um, but this is, you know, back, back in the day. So yeah. I'm talking about my grandmother. So in my family, those two, um, what would be, I guess, my great uncles, I, I don't even know where they fall, but those are the only people in my family who did anything outside of a job to make money. Mm -hmm. So the only reason I know that story is because my uncle, shout out to you, Uncle Mark. My uncle um, would always tell me that, like, you got their spirit and this and that and the other, you know. And I appreciate, I really do, I appreciate that. But for the most part, it's only me. I'm yeah. the only one who has gone to the levels, um, you know, because I don't I don't work uh, nine to five. I mm -hmm. work, but I work our companies. Um, and, you know, it's funny because it, I was sitting at work and just for no reason, I just sat in the cubicle and I just started packing up and I just walked out. 
it's like something just came over me. I didn't have no plan B. I didn't have no alternative. What are you going to do? I was just, I just couldn't do it. I could not do it. Um, The month before that, I kind of fell out with my supervisor because they sent out an email saying that if we have to go to the bathroom, that we need to come to his desk and let him know. And I was like, bullshit, I'm not doing that. Like, there's just no way. You know me, I've been here long enough. You know, I don't abuse my break times and I don't abuse my bathroom times. I'm not about to start. And and you're a man. You don't need to know what I'm doing like that. (laughs) So I told him that. You know, and he was like, oh, not you, Don. I'm like, no, not me, because I wasn't going to go for it anyway. Yeah. But ever since that last email, it took me maybe like a month, uh, almost a month after that. I just didn't. I just felt like, you know, I just can't. I can't. Um, and so the first business that I started was a daycare and um, in home daycare. Um, that's really kind of what got me going in terms of entrepreneurship. That's really what did it because um, I I had everything. Like we did Spanish lessons, computers, you know, field trips. We had our little t-shirts and stuff, you know, after school program. It was on. I still talk to my clients who were babies then, but I still keep in touch with them. But um, it was, it was nice. I loved it. You know, I was able to take family vacations and do all this stuff that I really couldn't even do when I was working a regular job because I just couldn't afford it. Um, and so that was the first time I did anything on my own. Um, after that, uh, well, actually during that time, uh, my husband is an artist and um, he's a dope ass artist, like for real, he's the truth. Um, so he brought his experience from, he's Puerto Rican, he brought his experience from Puerto Rico and all the different things that he would do there. Um, And to hear because, you know, Puerto Ricans are like really a part of the culture. He grew up in New York and all that. So Mm -hmm. it's like his graffiti and all this other stuff. I was like, we need to do something with this. So we got a little shop. Um, He was killing it, like airbrushing on just anything. Like he has gangs and just airbrushing on all types of stuff, doing very, very well. And then we ventured off into uh, murals and with him doing murals, forget about it. I mean, killing it. So right today, he still does murals, but he does them for like the Disney vacation homes and stuff like that, you know, over there. Um, And I don't know, like both of us just have this thing where, you know, we just probably don't make good employees um, because it's really difficult to um, have someone, you know, just you just don't have time freedom. And for us, it just doesn't work anymore. So it's hard sometimes because, you know, you got the slow seasons and you got the times where you're, but I'd rather do it for us than have to deal with, you know, outside. So for entrepreneurship, there's just no turning back for me. Same here. I feel the same exact way. That's straight. And that's, that's an adult. I I feel some type of way where I have to, I have to tell you that I'm going to the bathroom like what the that, audacity yeah that, the that, audacity. Doesn't, that, that doesn't even sit right with me right but this was just the nerve of don't even even have the idea that that you need their permission or you, i need to be told that when you're going to the bathroom i'm an adult with children married pay my own bills and everything like that just, that's just crossing sit, the line this doesn't Cross, sit right with me no now with you opening uh that daycare business uh what were some of the what were some uh like, what were some of those things that you learned early on on what to do and then what not to do? Because I can only imagine, you know, just from, I'm sorry, just for marketing, like I said, we, I mean, social media wasn't as, as uh, wasn't around around that time. So what was marketing that business like and what were some of those early challenges in building that business? I am so glad you asked me that. I've never been able to really talk about this. <laughs> Okay, so you're right. There was no social media. (laughs) It did not exist. MySpace wasn't even here yet. Um, And so I did this. I took my little, bless that printer. That printer just really saved my life. I took that printer and I made um, little quad flyers, Mm -hmm. right? So each piece of paper, I wanted to get the most out of it. Cut those up and just had a whole bunch of little tiny flyers and I would just put my babies in the back seat 
go around and we lived in an apartment at the time. I would go around the apartment complexes every single morning. When I say I did that every single morning, I'm a person that when I get into the zone of something, that's it. I'm all in and nothing matters <laughs> except the rest of the day cannot start until we did that. So I started doing little things and I know as a mom what I was looking for in a daycare and I wanted to see little finger paintings that my kid has has done. I wanted to see the popcorn balls that they made and the colors and, you know, all of this stuff. So I just started going to the dollar store and just getting like all of this craft stuff for the kids. I got some little cots, you know, yeah. um, and this isn't a one bedroom. I was in a one bedroom. But what I did, I took all of my kids' toys <laughs> and I put all of their stuff in the living room. I got a little cheap little, because back then, if you didn't have a border going across your wall, you were like, not, your house wasn't designer, <laughs> you know. So I got like a little kid's border and I put that all around. And um, when people would come in, they were just like, they loved it, you know. So I would sit down and talk with them. Um, I learned quickly that I needed to come up with a way for them to pay and I couldn't get into like the sob stories because I was getting burned, 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 you know, with people telling me and me feeling terrible, you know, this single mom, oh my God, how could he do her like that? She can't pay her daycare, yeah. you know, getting all involved in the whole drama of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I learned quickly that um, I can't, I have to keep that part of it business. Yeah. So as a result, I came up with a parent handbook. I came up with an application. I'm not even sure if I'm going to watch a child. We got to meet first, you know, yeah. with, with your um, beliefs and, and, and how do you want, what do you expect from us and et cetera. Um, so I got on like the food program where they would reimburse me for all the nutritional meals. I just had to make sure I had the menus planned out. I mean, listen, I was in there. I was in there. I kid you not. We did, you know, story time. We had the little colorful little carpet that... I, I took that from there to like a town home and then I was renting a house and the house had a whole separate like entranceway, a whole separate area for just the daycare. It had its own bathroom and everything. I loved doing that. My husband hooked up the little kitty little murals all over the walls. It was amazing. Um, and I just wanted to be the best. So I took that. Oh, and sidebar, one thing that saved my business is that I ended up getting three strippers as clients. And when I tell you those girls were like, oh, we're going to Miami for this and that. Can you keep them? Yep, I sure can. <laughs> <laughs> we're going here for, to do this. Can you keep them? Yes, I sure can. And I mean, they pretty much funded my business. Yeah. It's the truth. They did. Um, God, I hope those girls are okay. But anyway, so... Haven't thought about them in years, but um, so I I was able to grow my daycare to the point I was doing like consults consults for um, other women who are interested in opening up a daycare because they started hearing about me and things like that. Um, but yeah, just from the got it out the mud as they say when it comes to to that, it was it was awesome. I appreciate you for sharing that because I hear so many like not just notaries but just entrepreneurs in general like complain about oh i'm not doing this i'm not doing that it's like you know the the tools that we have available to us today with social media with smartphones <laughs> and everything it's like i couldn't imagine being in an era where the majority of your marketing is like pretty much boots on the ground like you passing yeah. out flyers you're at these uh vendor events uh whether you cold calling you dropping by the office or or even to get into yellow book pages on top of that right so for, so for us to have the type of tools that we have available to us today, it's like, we're not in a position to complain about anything. You, okay. It's either gonna make it work or make it work. Yes, yes. I tell my kids that all the time because, you know, of course I want my kids to be entrepreneurs as well. And so like, I have these conversations with them. You know, I got millennial, I got a Gen Z, I got, you know, the, the spectrum pretty much with my kids. And I try to, and I, I tell them this all the time, until the day I die, you will hear me preach entrepreneurship to you. One day, one of y'all are going to catch it yeah. because it's the, the, the information is just unbelievable that yeah. is available. Like I can't even, I was telling my husband because he was trying to do something else. Mm -hmm. And I was like, um, yeah, you can't do it like that. And he was like, but that's how we done. I'm like, yeah, but that was then. 
<laughs> everything has changed now. And yeah. he's like, well, you know, I'm an introvert, which he is. And it's like for him to get on Instagram and say anything, yeah. <laughs> for him to get on TikTok and do anything, it's just yeah. not going, you know. So I'm like, I know, but we got to try to, you know, move with the tide here and yeah. do it, you know. But the information at the click of a button, like, no, you if you wanted to know how to register your LLC, you couldn't just Google that. Yeah. You know, you had to go through a process, you know, finding out any type of information, mm -hmm. details, bank account, like a lot of stuff we just didn't know that we have now. So Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we're definitely privileged to be in this in this information era, like I said, where the pitfalls that we possibly couldn't avoid before is like now is like it's like the pitfall is like right in front of you and we got the information on how to avoid it it's like so if you choose to walk into that pitfall that's on you like you're being ignorant that's for of real it, right <laughs> so yeah i appreciate you for sharing that so knowing that you're like say your background in, in the daycare business and you uh, have an early entrepreneurial experience how, how did you how did you uh, end up in getting into the notary business you know it's really funny because um so i have i uh, I feel, I'm so embarrassed to even say this, but all right. So in 2019, I started keto, right? Mm -hmm. And I lost a hundred pounds. I mean, fine. Okay. Everything snatched up. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> but I had a stroke the, and the stroke is what like motivated me to do keto. Mm -hmm. um, I started, you know, feeling just amazing. My body, I'm, everything is looking good and I'm feeling great. Yeah. And as a result, and to try to keep myself accountable, I started an Instagram for keto. But it wasn't to do anything except document where I started and where I am because, you know, the stroke like scared the shit out of me. I don't ever want to see that again. I really thought I was dying. And so um, women started like asking me questions like, how you do this? How you do that? Can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? And I was like, ching, business. So I turned that into like keto coaching and, you know, I got an ebook, I got meal plans, I got all this other shit. I was into it. So I had a girlfriend who she was watching me. I met her through, you know, Instagram and turns out, you know, she was down the street from me. We started hooking up to go to the gym and all this other stuff. And once a month we would meet. Um, she would come over and we would sit down and just drink coffee, talk shit, and then explain, you know, come up with ideas on how we're going to make our businesses better. Yeah. She's a real estate and a notary. So every time, like for five months, she would be telling me, girl, I just have all these signings. I don't even know what I'm going to do. I don't have anybody to help me. And I was like, girl, I'm home. Like, because I don't know what doing a signing means. I don't I don't know what she means when she says that. Right. So to me, I was just like, girl, you know, I'm here. Just call me. I'll go. I'll do it for you. No big deal. You know, I'll represent you, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I was talking, I really wasn't interested. I yeah. really was just like, if she calls me, she calls me. But I didn't know what the deal really was. Mm -hmm. Finally, after, like I said, about five months of her saying this to me, I was seeing her out, you know, we were standing outside and I was like, all right, I promise I'm going to look into it. I'm going to go right back upstairs, log in and see what you're talking about with this notary stuff. And I did. And the first thing that got my attention, $10,000 a month. <laughs> and I was like, damn, I can make $10,000. She didn't tell me that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you know, that to you. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> I'm like, shoot, I would have looked into it before now, you know? Um, so I just started digging further, digging further. And then I was like, I don't know, because it was so many videos. Because to me, the $10,000 was like, really? Yeah. You sure? Why isn't everybody a notary? And then, um, so I was on the fence. You know, I had just a teeny bit of skepticism, but not enough to stop me from looking further into it. Yeah. So then I started looking for our people to see what we got to say about it. Yeah. You know, are we out here saying that we can do it? Because, you know, that's not the first thing that pops up. The first thing that pops up is some other people, you know, notaries are paid the same day, da, da, da. Right. And so um, I started, you know, following different people that, you know, kind of resonated with me. Grip was one of those people. Um, Grizel. Oh, my God. The first time I'm telling you, I fanned out with the first time when I was in a live and Grizel said hi to me. I was like, ah! Grizel said hi to me. <laughs> Shout out to Grizel. She, she, she Shout out to Grizel. I was like so excited because I knew, you know, 
before I decided to do it, she was one of the people that I just kept going back to her videos and stuff, you know. And so, um, man, I I spoke to my girlfriend and I was like, girl, you know, what's up with the $10,000? She was like, girl, I know $10,000 a month. This is how it goes. And she broke it down and I said, well, it doesn't make sense to just stay at, you know me, I'm, I, I got to boss it up. Okay. So if right. the money is in the signing service, I need to have a damn signing service. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I need to go. Um, and so I started just figuring out, okay, how to be a notary. I got kind of a bit of a information overload when it came to where I was digging around. Cause I was digging around clubhouse, Facebook and YouTube. Mm-hmm. And, um, shortly after I got my commission, Oh my goodness. I feel like I'm talking so much. So, okay. My mom, my youngest daughter and me got our commission together. My mom, after we got our commission, she got sick and she wasn't able to like, you know, stay in there with me, you know, mm-hmm. building Notary Nation. But she did things like, you know, she chose our name because um, my my keto business was um, Curves Nation. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you need to stay with the nation. You know, just I was yeah. like, OK, let's stay with that. Um, so we did. And then she chose the colors and stuff like that. And, you know, she was just, it was me and her, me and her, but then she wasn't able to really rock like that anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, well, temporarily, and then we got some other stuff going on health wise. So I was like, okay, mommy, so I'm going to do everything that I can do to try to make this business profitable. And then when you are ready and you can come back, then I'll have learned a lot of stuff and I can teach you how to do this, that, and the other. So that's kind of where we are um, right now. But initially I was going to give up because I was like, my mom is sick. Um, Everybody is like giving out so many different, because I spent like a couple thousand dollars by the time it was said and done in terms of getting trainings, um, you know, going to this person for mentorships, you know, doing this, doing that to try to learn. Because even though I know, I know the things, you know, on the outside in terms of running a business, I don't really know nothing about being a notary. Yeah. Um, so I learned after, well, about two months of doing loan signings. I just don't like loan signings. I got my own reasons for that. Okay. Um, and I decided to focus. I decided to focus on general notary work where I can have more control over my income and, you know, the times that I go and all of that. So um, now, oh, another thing too, I wasn't sure what direction I wanted to go in, in terms of like niching down or um, focusing on one particular area. Once I realized all the variables and all the different options that we have for using our stamp or just being a notary. Cause like for I-9, you don't use your stamp and stuff like that. So I went on and um, started paying attention to all of the demographics, all of my analytics, where's this coming from? Where's that coming from? And the majority, probably because I'm in Florida, the majority of my business was some type of estate planning document. Mm-hmm. whether it was a will, a POA or whatever. And since that seemed to be doing well and that's where my money is coming from, I need to really get good, you know, and get uh, familiar with how this process goes and, and what's going to be our process as a company. Yeah. You know, if people need a witness, if people need um, documents, because I had a lot of people asking me, can you drop the will for us? Because blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I talked to a girlfriend of mine who's a paralegal, got her on board. Um, my daughter, my youngest daughter, <clears throat> she's working at the law firm, but at first she was just a receptionist. So she mm-hmm. wasn't like, you know, doing no paralegal stuff. Mm-hmm. But now she's a criminal and family law paralegal. So I brought her in, like, can you help me, you know, if I need this and that. So I started just, you know, coming up with creative ways to expand the business that wouldn't necessarily cost me, but I could profit from. Yeah. So um, now that's that's where we are. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you for sharing that. And one uh, one of the uh, takeaways that I want to touch back on is one, like you said, you spent, you invested in yourself by spending that money on the training. Because I think for most notaries, when you get into the business, it is pretty much you learn the laws, you get your commission, sign for a sign up with a sign of service, and then you mm-hmm. go from there. 
But I don't think most people understand that when you come into this business that you need to make the investment in yourself because no one is going to hold your hand throughout the process. No one is going to reach out to you and say, hey, you want to learn how to <laughs> learn how to uh, perform estate plan signings? Like no one's going to reach out to you unless you come across their page and they're marketing themselves. So you got to be very proactive coming into the business as far as if you want to learn how to do loan closings, okay, spend the money, spend the time learning how to perform loan closings. You want to learn how to do apostilles, okay. Find a find a mentor, find a person that's uh, that actually has done what you're trying to do and actually spend that money to learn it. Because, again, no one's going to hold your hand throughout the process. So I appreciate you sharing that you invested in yourself because most folks are not willing to invest in themselves. Like it sounds good to talk about it in the moment. But when it actually comes down to taking that card out and putting that card number in to actually invest in those trainings, that's when that's when you put your money where your mouth is. So I appreciate you for sharing that. Absolutely. And, and another thing that's uh, that I also want to touch on as well, because I don't think notaries do this, is uh, just from listening to you, you come off as someone who's about team, uh, build, building out a team. So I see you've heard, I've heard you speak on uh, having your mother helping you out, uh, having uh, uh, friends that's in the business as well and, and bringing them on the team to help you out as well. And another dope aspect is you, your daughter has paralegal experience, which is uh, uh, which is a bonus in the uh, family law and uh, you said family and criminal law, right? Yeah, that's what she's doing now. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's pretty cool that you're able to bring her on, on onto the team as well. And you're not, you're not doing this by yourself. Like it's you, you're doing this all as a collective. And I think as a collective as from, from what I've seen with my agency, I've made more money build it, but bringing people in as opposed to trying to do this by myself. Because when you're trying to do this by yourself, you really don't have the time to actually do everything that needs to be done anyway. So when you're able to bring on people who's experts in their lane, that's going to help your business scale up even further as well. So I appreciate you for sharing that because it's a, I come across so many solopreneurs within the industry, but I have come across many folks that's willing to build out a team to get to that next level. Um, yeah, you if you're planning to have some type of longevity, you should consider linking with people that you can trust. Yeah. And even if that doesn't fall through, don't give up because not everyone is going to see your vision. And if they do, they may not see it as clearly as you do. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. But as the person who's steering the ship, you have to be willing to say, you know, I'm going to take a chance here. Part of being an entrepreneur is being a risk taker. Yeah. Like you cannot be no punk over here scared talking about, oh, I don't know. I don't know. No, you, you got it. Okay. You don't know, but do it anyway. Yeah. You know, um, I tell my kids and I tell just about every conversation that I have, for some reason it comes up, feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. You never know what's on the other side of fear and fear is something you created in your mind. It's, yeah. it's an illusion. Yeah. Let it go. Right. It's an illusion. So some people say, well, you know, I don't know if I can trust this person. If you can't trust that person and you don't know, then go with somebody else. Yeah. But, you know, you don't know if you can trust that person either. You just think you can. Yeah. So the only way you're going to know that is to actually begin doing business. Yeah. So yeah. over here, like even with we have another notary, we have two actually now that are um, bilinguals. And I also have another um, person that helps me as well. So it's Tyrone which Tyrone, he's a notary loan signing agent. And he really just, because he has a business degree, he really just helps me in terms of navigating on that part. But every time we have a staff meeting, every time I have a class or anything like that, he's right there beside me. Yeah. Um, he knows my mom. I've known him for several years. So he knows my mom and he knew, you know, what happened. So he kind of stepped in. Mm -hmm. um, but because I, I'm very good at you know, feeling out how's the energy with this person when I'm speaking with you? How's the energy? So the two that are bilingual, awesome, awesome, you know, but if I didn't feel that, I would not work with them. So we start them off with just doing simple things, maybe even just like a one page document. Um, we also kind of test like, OK, I got a last minute. I know this wasn't expected, but are you available just to see, like, are they going to try to make the effort to get there? Yeah. Um, before we can say like they're actually a part of Notary Nation or are they just a notary that we can call whenever we just need, you know, someone to go out. Yeah. Um, but there's all types of variables that go into building a team. 
I think the primary thing is treat people good. Yeah. Um, care, show them that you do care about, you know, what's up with their lives. How was your son's birthday? You know, just whatever. Um, and building that trust between each other and having a common goal. You know, you help me reach where I'm going to go. All right. You don't know how to do Canva. You know, I'll design all your stuff for you or, I'll, you know, I'll show you how to do it. Just it's a give and take. And I, I, I want to touch on the 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 trust, the trust building. Uh, I hear I hear folks say that quite often. It's like, oh, I want to get into business, but I don't know if I can trust people. Well, uh, if you plan on getting into business, you're going to have to trust uh, people eventually, because <laughs> if yes. not, then you're, you, you're not going to be in business because we're in the entrepreneurship. There's a lot of relationship building. Obviously, you know, we're trying to trust. Uh, we're trying we try, I'm trusting one of uh, a person that's going to provide this service for me. And they're trusting me to do the same for them as well, even if in, in, in regards to sending referrals and, and uh, building your network as well, like. You have to establish the trust at some point, and if not, you do better off just staying at the at your nine to five and just keep doing that. Mm -hmm. That's that's a fact, and unfortunately, that people will make an excuse for anything they don't want to do. Yeah, you know, um, you can say that you know you can't trust it, and you're not going to win every time. There's going to be some L's along the way, Absolutely. and that's just one of it. So um, one thing I want to offer people who may be considering building a team, um, first of all, I encourage you to absolutely do that because you cannot do it all. And it all is a lot. Yeah. That's yeah. why you can't do it all because it's a lot. So if you find that um, you are speaking with someone and y'all have, you know, this camaraderie amongst each other, see if the person find out what their beliefs are. How do they see business? Are they able to separate their emotions from business? Um, and I think that's a part of the reason why it's a little difficult sometimes for people to do business with family, for an example. Your family might see you as, you know, little whoever, and here you are a whole grown person operating as a CEO, but they'll never see you like that. Those that will never see you like that is not who you want to ask to join your business with you. Thanks. The ones who can see that you've grown and they communicate with you as an adult now and, and they respect what you're doing and they show interest. Plus, maybe they've had you know some projects that they've been working on or whatever. But gauge it and kind of do what works for you. Just don't be disappointed if it's a friend, a relative, neighbor, whatever, and yeah. it doesn't work out. It's okay. It didn't work out. Next, you you have to keep it moving. You really can't let anything stop you. Yeah, they got you. Got to be able to separate that. You know, uh, that personal mm -hmm. and business. I think it's a real fine line, especially working with family, because you know, I mean, it's it's hard to fire your family members, but you know, if it does happen, you know. Next time I see you at the cookout, you don't want to talk to me now. You know, the, the conversation is awkward. So, <laughs> yeah, you really got to do your due diligence when it comes to building out your team. Because like I said, this is, I mean, this is your business at the end of the day. You want to make sure you have the, you want to make sure you have the right mixture of people. Because at the end of the day, we're all trying to reach this desired goal. If you're a person that fits, okay, we're going to bring you on. I'm going to be patient with you and do and work with you every step of the way. So, I can get to a point where I may not need to micromanage or watch over you. You already know the the, the processes, you know, the procedures of everything that needs to be done and we can get to that point. Right. So yes, it's key. Yeah. I'm, I'm still learning myself. Uh, I, I got a couple of team members working on bringing a third person in as well. And it's been a very fascinating process because I've always viewed, I viewed myself before coming into this year, someone that's solo, like, you know, I'm 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 real big on uh well my my favorite sport is basketball, so I'm one of those kind of people. Where if you give me the ball, I'm not passing it back to you. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a cook. I'm gonna go ISO like that. And I put that, that same I put that same mindset into into uh, into this business. But you know, if you're trying to get to that you know to that seven figure uh, number, which is what I'm uh, striving to get to, you know, it has to be. It's it's going to take more than my efforts to get to that level, right? So. It took me a while to get to that point, but now that I, I fully grasp and understand the concept of building a team and getting to that desired place, I'm all in. I'm all in on that model, all in on it. So I appreciate Good. you for sharing that. Absolutely. Uh, and then, uh, so right now, so <clears throat> I know um, right now you, you're building out your sign of service. Now, 
Uh, I know you mentioned say you don't do long, you not you don't do long closings, which I don't blame you at all. Uh, like, is the is the focus of your business? Are you doing mostly estate plan signings? Uh, what would we say is like your your preferred service that you're offering right now? Yeah, um, my preferred um, business, as far as the niche goes, is estate planning. Um, but I've added apostilles. Um, mm-hmm. I took an apostille class with um, John Smith, I believe is his name. Um, I did his class. He's out in California. And I was just yeah, like, I took his class. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great class, you know. Yeah. Um, thorough. Very yes, thorough. Very thorough. Extremely detailed and thorough. But he's been doing it for years. He's, you know, the godfather here, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. on that. And I learned a lot from that. And then I probably, um, I don't know, I stopped doing this, but I would I would pay for a class and then I would take that same class again with somebody else. And then I would take <laughs> it again with somebody else. I stopped doing that shit, but I don't know. I just want to make sure I was like as well versed as I possibly could. Like, okay, yeah. well, this is how he does it. Well, let me see how she does it. Let me see if she yeah. has yeah. something else I could take from that. But I, I stopped doing that stuff. But now... Um, Apostilles in Florida. Are, I have one coming um, today. Matter of fact, she'll be here at 1130. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I go to the Secretary of State tomorrow, I'm taking Uh-oh. I crashed. Uh, there we go. OK, OK. I don't know what happened. Watch for a quick second. But you were saying yeah. that you have an apostille, you have an apostille that you're doing. You're going to the SOS tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be heading up there tomorrow. Um, one of them has to go to DC. But so high ticket, it just makes sense to focus on you know higher ticket items like the apostilles, estate mm-hmm. planning, and things mm-hmm. like that. Now, eventually, yeah, mm-hmm. I'll go and focus into turning converting into. Think we froze. Uh, did I lose you? Pause for starting back. Okay. There we so go. So going um to the Secretary of State and focusing on apostilles mm-hmm. and focusing on estate planning. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really where I just prefer because it's more for me where the money resides. Are you there? Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So that's that's what I'm focusing on. And then later on, after I've got more experience as far as just being a notary, you know, mm-hmm. I've got my name out in my community. I've mm-hmm. built up, you know, some clients. Like I have right now, only three repeat client repeat clients. But I want to get more into that repetitive thing. I want to become mm-hmm. a few of these um, assisted living facilities. I want to be their primary. You know, I got some things to work on yeah. Um, yeah. before I say, okay, let me focus on um, building my signing service. But mm-hmm. that's just the way, you know, that's just the route that I'm choosing to take right now. I think that's, and that's a great idea. And, and uh, not to mention, you already have three repeat clients. So that's a great space to be in. I mean, we all love repeat clients. That repeat business is so slept on. Mm-hmm. Uh, the opportunity for you to continue to get uh, to, uh oh, there we go. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> we gonna edit that out. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just saying that. Uh, yeah, repeat clients are the best. Uh, yeah. And less money to spend on marketing. They know your process already. And if you provide such a great service to them, they end up referring you out to people. I mean, referring out uh, to their colleagues and peers, right? So, if I if I, if it's one thing to take away from this interview, y'all, is focus on getting those repeat clients, uh, estate planning attorneys. If it's a title company, if it's an architectural law firm for apostilles, shout out to Cam. Uh, who else needs uh, services? Um, fingerprinting. Uh, private security firms, they definitely need repeat uh, need your services when they're onboarding uh, new uh, new guards. So their repeat clients, love them. Yeah. Love them so much. Uh, so just, uh, I mean, man, with, man, so much uh, that you shared with us today. 
Um, what do you have coming up in the works? Do you have any workshops? Do you have any books? What, what do you have coming up in the works that we should know about? So I do. Um, on the 15th, I'm doing a Canva night. So it's more like a fun Canva night, you know, get your wine, get your vodka, whatever it is, get your apple juice. And we're just going to sit there and create. And so for the people who sign up for that, I am asking that you already have your hex codes together. If not, you know, let me know in advance so we can get that ready. Um, and then I want to create like three different things for them. So I want to do um, an ID badge. Um, a, I hate to call it a flyer or a resume because I have to think of a name to call this document, but it's kind of like a notary resume. Um, and then also a brochure. Um, and just to help them to become familiar, because if you can create this stuff on your own, your marketing materials, and you just have to pay for printing, it really does save on having to pay, even if you go through, you know, some of these other sites and stuff like that, it's better to have your own, own vision there that comes to light. So I really love Canva. I used Canva with another business that I had, which is a travel business. And um, it's just my thing. So that is coming up um, next Friday. And then on, let me see, what are my dates for that? Because I have two, I broke up two classes for um, the 17th and the 24th. And what we're doing there is for any notary who, because some notaries, I was surprised to learn this, but some people are still taking like cash app and different things like that. They, they don't really have like payment processors set up. Um, they're not sure what direction to go in. I'm going to do a little bit on that, but I'm also going to do, um, show them how to do like a SWAT just to see, you know, how can you make your business better? We're going to do a lot of things. That's why I broke it up into two parts because a lot goes into it. And I want to show them how I've been able to consistently either meet or surpass what I need to make for my notary business. So I want to show them kind of how to do that, how to make things work, how to handle the calls, how to even make cold calls, how to keep up with that, do the follow up. It's a lot. Um, so I just wanted to put all of that out there um, and hopefully, you know, be able to help people. Um, I keep my classes. Well, the in-person class that I did was a little bit bigger because um, I had the abnormal notary with me. So <laughs> that one was a little bigger than what I would like. It was 15 people. I usually like to stay anywhere between five to seven people. Um, so that way I have, you really can get what you came for. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, you can ask questions, you feel more comfortable in that environment. So I'll be doing um, those three things this month, but I think the Canva class, because it seems to be very, very popular, I'll probably do that um, every, every month. I think that's a sweet spot, five to seven. Uh, that's a real intimate experience. Cause I think, uh, I I think even for me at school, when I was in uh, large classes, it could be a little intimidating, like, especially if, if, if you're not grasping the information, you don't want to put your, you don't want to ask those questions because you don't want to come off as the person where you don't, if, uh, you're the one that's not getting it, but everybody else is, right? So right. I think that, I think that's a sweet, a very sweet, uh, sweet spot to be in, five to seven, very intimate experience. Make sure y'all check that out. And then always, and this one, and I always like to ask this question before we head out. What is, where do you, where do you see Notary Nation in the next five to ten years? Well, um, I'm spending this three to five years just educating myself and educating my team. Mm -hmm. So that's my primary focus right now is just trying to see, you know, who's the next person's foot that I can sit under and learn. Um, and so right now. And it'll be that way because I want to be well versed on what it is that we're doing. So we plan to open up another location. I'm sitting here in our first location now, actually our second location, because we moved out of the first one. <laughs> the first one was just too small. It just wasn't. Yeah. You guys are growing. You're growing. That's a good yeah. problem to have. You know? So we're going to go ahead and get another location in another county. Um, and that'll be within three to five years. And then by the time we're up and approaching 10 years, I plan to be, you know, sitting on a beach in Jamaica and just kind of doing things from my cell phone, um, uh, signing services, um, in, you know, different locations. Um, that's where, you know, we would like to be um, nationwide, of course. Um, 
and with a roster of notaries and a roster, you know, clients just so right now my focus is, like I said, educating myself. I'm new to being a notary. I've only been a notary for over a, a little over a year. Um, but business is, is my thing. So that's why I've been able to do the things that I have to make Notary Nation give us a good foundation. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely just want to continue to learn, learn, learn as much as I can. Whatever I got to pay for, I pay for. Whatever is free information, I'm, I'm gathering that too. That's dope. I appreciate that. I appreciate you for sharing that with us today. Um, yes, that's, that's, you know, with your business experience, regardless, you've been in the business for six months. I mean, you've been an entrepreneur for as, as, as for, for a while. So I, I'm, I have no doubt that you're going to, that you, that your, that your business is going to take off and it's going to do very well. Very, I'm, I, yeah, I have no, I have no doubts. That's, um, yeah, I want to thank you for stopping by today, sharing your story with us. Very inspiring. Uh, it got me uh, really excited as far as the team building aspect, because like I said, that's where I'm at within my business right now, just building out the team and just adding new people onto the team. So uh, I appreciate you for stopping by today. Where can the people find you? Where can they get in touch with you? Where can they support you? So you can follow me first on Instagram. It is at one, the number one notary nation. Um, my website is one notary nation.com. Um, and you can always, you know, shoot me a DM if you have questions or suggestions, <laughs> um, or whatever, you know, um, I offer free, uh, 15 minute consults. If you wanted to connect on that, that's in the link in my bio and you can register for any of the classes or anything that I'm doing that you're interested in via the link in my Instagram bio as well. Make sure y'all tap in, make sure y'all support Don. Make sure y'all tune in for Canva night. Book that call, y'all. She has entrepreneurs. She has a, a business owner experience. She's been a business owner for many moons. I'm pretty sure she can, uh, she's seen it all. So make sure y'all book the book there, book your consultation. Uh, before we jump off, got to plug in the Stampin' Academy real quick because that's just what we do. Make sure y'all tap in with the Stampin' Academy. Uh, with seven courses, ebook. We got 10 plus recorded sessions. Just recently added the uh, Apple Steel replay, Apple Steel one on one. Shout out to my guy Winston for coming through and educating us. Uh, yeah, make sure y'all tap, make sure y'all check in, y'all. Weekly live classes. We didn't do it, we're not doing a live class this week, but next week we will be doing a live class. Stay tuned for that announcement. Uh, for any notaries that's listening, make sure you join the Stamper community. We're always looking for notaries to work with nationwide. I don't care what city you're in. I'm looking to collaborate with you and pass out opportunities. Uh, make sure you go to Stamper Community. We're on Facebook as well. Uh, again, thank you to Don for being my guest. I'm also looking forward to the opportunity to also collaborate with her, hopefully on a future signing uh, down in Florida as well. And make sure y'all like, make sure y'all subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. Make sure you leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you listen to us on Spotify as well. And until next time, y'all, peace.